Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about the different oxygen systems that are available inside of the 737. What kind of oxygen system do the passengers use? What do we use inside of the flight deck? And why do we need to have oxygen systems in the first place? So stay tuned. This video is brought to you together with Brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant.org is a website that will help you really understand and improve your math and physics skills. Make sure that you check out the link below. Right, guys. So, in order for us to understand why it's important to have backup oxygen systems, we really have to understand why you need to bother with oxygen in the first place inside of commercial airliners. So, airliners... 737s, Airbuses, all of them, um, will try to fly as high as possible. Now, the reason they do that is because they can achieve much better speeds and much better economy by flying high. Okay, They will get quicker from A to B using less fuel. Um, the problem with doing that is that we, the people who are inside of the aircraft, we are designed to be walking around on the surface of the Earth. That's how our lungs and bodies are designed. Now, close to the surface of the Earth, we have a certain pressure, okay? As you get further up, higher, away from the surface of the Earth, the pressure will be get lower and lower and lower. Now, the amount of oxygen, as in the, the, the relationship between oxygen and other gases, will stay constant, but it will be further and further apart between the oxygen molecules. This means that our body cannot take it up, and we will start to suffer from something called hypoxia. Hypoxia is the lack of oxygen, okay? And you will notice that above about 10,000 feet, you will start to notice the effects of it. And the initial effects are you will kind of feel drunk, very happy, delirious, you know, like, oh, this is great. That's the first effect. Now, what you won't notice is that you will have problems solving even the simplest problems. So even the easiest mathematical problems you will not be able to solve. But you also lose the ability to recognize that, okay? You will be stupid, but you will not know it. Now, as the oxygen um, derived gets worse, as, in, as the hypoxia gets worse, um, you will start to feel bad. You will start to feel physically ill. You will start vomiting. Eventually, you will lose consciousness, and at the end, you will die. So, this is bad, okay? And as I said, above 10,000 feet, the first sign starts to happen. Over 30,000 feet, which is generally where we are operating, we enter something called the death zone. Above there, the amount of oxygen that your body can take up is only about a third of what you need. All right? And you will lose consciousness within two minutes. At 41,000 feet, we're talking maybe 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds from when the pressure goes to outside pressure until you lose consciousness. So, obviously, we need to do something about this, and you can fix this in two different ways. Either you can add extra oxygen into the atmosphere. You can do that by using an oxygen mask. Uh, that way, the pressure is still the same, but the amount of oxygen is more so that you, you can still survive. The other way, because this will obviously be extremely bulky, the other way that we do, and that this is what all airliners do, is that we pressurize the cabin to mimic the pressure and the conditions down on the ground. That way, the body can still take up the oxygen needed and you will not notice that you're at above 30,000 feet. So the, we do this by using bleed air from the engines. Now, I will explain this system, the pressurization system, in more detail in a different podcast. But what you need to know is that we use outside air, which is compressed, we push that into the cabin and that makes you be able to breathe. Right, so, then, what happens if something fails? What happens if, for example, we you have a problem with this bleed air system, or if the cabin becomes punctured, which happened in the Southwest incident the other week? Well, what happens then is that the pressure inside of the cabin will equalize with the outside pressure very quickly. 
you will notice this by you will hear it you will feel that air is being sucked towards where the puncture is you will hear you or feel your ears pop and in some cases there will even be fog instantly developing inside of the cabin because the uh, the amount of um, uh, moisture in the air since the, the pressure suddenly decreases it will form cloud basically inside of the cabin right the, the one thing that you will notice, hopefully though, is that oxygen masks will drop. Now this is why it's so important for you guys to listen to the cabin crew when they go through the security briefing before the flight. Because as you saw in the case of the Southwest passengers, they did not put the oxygen on correctly. Remember how the cabin crew is telling you that you need to put the uh, mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally? Okay. If you don't, it means that if you're using your nose to breathe and you're using the mask over your mouth only, you will not take up the oxygen that is being provided to you. Right, so the way that the oxygen system works for the passengers is that every seat row, every seat row of three, has a PSU. Okay, it's a, it's a passenger service unit. Each passenger service unit has four masks in them. That means that it's a spare mask per row. We have that because there might be a mom sitting with her infant or a dad sitting with his infant. Or if the cabin crew is out doing their service when the pressurization change happens, they are instructed to sit down at the closest possible point and take one of the spare masks and put it on. And this is because they might not have time to reach their own station before they lose consciousness. The passenger oxygen will be activated when the cabin is felt to have moved above 14,000 feet. Okay. The pilot will get an indication that the cabin has some kind of problem with it when it reaches 10,000 feet. So there's actually an altimeter that is connected to the cabin to show what cabin altitude we have. So we have outside altimeters and we have inside altimeters to measure what kind of altitude it has. When it feels that it has 10,000 feet, we will get a warning that sounds beep, 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 which we know if we're in the air that something bad is happening and we have to put our oxygen mask on, which I'll come to in a second. Anyway, the way that the passenger system works, okay, um, you would have noticed when you hear the security brief as well, that once the passenger or masks drop, you have to pull it down sharply, all right? And that is because the passenger service unit, the PSU, is not an oxygen cylinder. It's an oxygen generator. It generates oxygen through chemicals being mixed, which gives you oxygen. If any one of those four masks is being pulled down, that pull that you do activates the generator and it will start flowing oxygen through all four masks in that row. So that's why you have to pull it down properly when, uh, when it falls down. Okay? Put it over your nose and mouth, breathe normally and then help anyone else. And the reason that you have to do it first yourself is because of that time of usual consciousness, okay? If it's only 15 seconds before you go unconscious, if you start fiddling around with putting the mask on, on your child, for example, you might become unconscious before you've done that and there's no help, all right? So this is why that is very important. Now, the amount of oxygen you will get out of one of these generators is about 12 minutes. Now, 12 minutes is more than enough for the pilot to get you from 40,000 feet that you might be at down to 10,000 feet, which we will be descending to in case of an uh, emergency descent. Now, remember how if you've been listening to news reports where there's been depressurizations, like in the Southwest case, uh, the passengers described that it felt like the aircraft was falling out of the sky. That's the rapid, that's, sorry, that's the emergency descent. So when we as pilots get an indication that we have a, a pressure drop in the cabin, we will get our oxygen mask on and we will initiate a very rapid descent to make sure that we can reach 10,000 feet where people can breathe without oxygen mask before the oxygen generators runs out in the cabin. So this is... Once again, I just want to emphasize that you really need to listen to the emergency brief before you take off, okay? Because it can save your life. Right, so what about the pilots then? What about the oxygen system inside of the cockpit? Well, I will describe that in just one second after this. 
Hi guys, if you're like me, you really didn't like math when you were young, okay? And the reason is probably because you think that it's really complicated, you have to memorize a lot of formulas and things like that. Now, the thing is that you will need to understand maths and physics in order to be successful in your pilot training course later on. And what I've noticed over the years is that anything that you truly understand is actually quite easy. And this is exactly what Brilliant.org does. So a course that I would recommend to you if you're struggling with math is mathematical fundamentals, okay? It will give you the stepping stones of knowledge that you need in order to start understanding. And you will notice that as you start understanding it, it will become much easier. They will use everyday examples. They will use little nuggets for you to crack and they will explain to you how to solve it, okay? So what I would like you to do is click the link below here. The 256 first of you who use that link will get a 20% discount of the annual fee for Brilliant.org. But I want to emphasize that checking out Brilliant.org is completely free. So just go down the link, click it, check it out, and afterwards let me know what you think about it. I've already gotten some indication from some of you users that Brilliant has really helped you to increase your math skills. And that makes me really happy. So let me know. All right, guys, so welcome back. So the oxygen systems that we pilots use in the front, in the, uh, in the cockpit, is very different. Now, the passengers, they were using oxygen generators that would last for about 12 minutes. The pilots are using masks that are connected to a big oxygen tank that is sitting under the cockpit just in front of the forward hold. That oxygen tank is designated to be able to, to give oxygen to four people in the flight deck, so two pilots and two observers. Now the masks are also very different. Now the oxygen masks in the back, and this by the way is, is something I wanted to mention as well. You know how a lot of people want um, to, to know why we're not using oxygen masks in case of a fire and smoke in the back? The reason for that is that the oxygen masks that the passengers have is using a mixture of the air outside and what's coming from the generator. So that means that in case of a fire, you would still be, be breathing in all of the smoke if you're using one of those. The only thing that the oxygen would do is it would feed a potential fire with oxygen. So that's why we're not deploying it. The pilot's masks are different. First of all, the pilot masks are designed to cover the entire face, uh, the eyes as well. This is because we need to be able to operate even in a smoke-filled environment. Now, in the beginning of the flight, before we do our first flight of the day, we always check the oxygen system and it has three different settings. It has normal setting. The normal setting will give you a mixture of the air outside and the oxygen provided and that's to prolong the life of the oxygen. Could be used, for example, if we are having to do a rapid descent down over a mountainous area like the Alps or the Andes and we have to fly at above 10,000 feet for a prolonged period of time. In that case, it could be good to, to be able to prolong the life of the oxygen bottle. Then we have 100%. Now, 100% will give you just that. It will give you 100% oxygen from the tank. And the third setting is emergency. Emergency will give you 100% oxygen under positive pressure, which is something we would use if there's a really smoke-filled environment to make sure that the air inside is completely clean, or if the, uh, the visor would fog up and we need to defog it, then we we'll put it over to, to emergency and that will defog the visor. Okay, so we test it, make sure that it's, uh, that it's usable, make sure that it's pro properly connected to the oxygen bottle. And then, uh, if anything happens during the flight, like, for example, an indication of a rapid depressurization, which would be that warning <laughs> that you heard before, okay? The first thing that the pilots have to do is we have to remove our headset, we take the oxygen mask up, and the way we do that is we pull it out of its box, turn it around, and then you have two red levers on it. Those red levers, if you push them in, the oxygen will actually enter into the harness and expand it so that you can easily put it over your head, fit it around your face, and then you release the levers. And when you do that, then the, uh, um, it will actually just kind of attach to the head and pull it in so it completely hermetically seals the face and the mask is on, all right? Then we put the headset back on, we go over to our audio control panel and switch it over to masks so that we can properly talk to each other. And then 
only then do we start with whatever we need to do, which is trying to sort out the, the um, pressure by closing the outflow valve, if that has been failing, or initiate an emergency descent. But the important thing is that we need to get the oxygen mask on for the same reason that you guys need to put the oxygen mask on, so that we don't suffer hypoxia and go uh, unconscious. Now, remember, for example, the Helios disaster that happened in Greece a few years back? Those pilots, we still don't know exactly what happens in the cockpit, but the fact is that those pilots never got their oxygen mask on, became unconscious, and the aircraft just continued to fly. This is why it is so important to get your oxygen mask on. Okay? Good. So, how long the oxygen, the, the oxygen in the tank will last depends on how many people there is in the cockpit, obviously. We do check the minimum requirement always before each flight to make sure that it's enough oxygen in there to be able to do an emergency descent and then possibly to fly for a bit longer as well in case there would be some kind of, of smoke event inside of the cockpit. The um, oxygen masks in themselves, um, there is features inside of them above 27,000 feet. In some of the aircraft, it will be st starting to provide pressure breathing, even if it's not an emergency. Uh, but that's generally how the oxygen system works. Okay. Now, if you have more questions about this, then put it in here in the um, comment section, or even better, go to the Mentor Aviation app, go into the chat, tag at Mentor, and send a message to me, and I will try to um, to to you know explain it to you if I'm inside of the app, which I am almost all the time when I'm down on the ground. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.